What's up, fans? Co Blue Goblin here on my main channel here for my next, for my newest Midtown Comics Stash episode. Now, for those of you who are watching this, go back and check out the previous episode where I review these four particular books from uh, from Midtown Comics: Akinero, The Bounce, He-Man, and Lazarus. Go check that out, and don't forget to go check out the the one before that one, the All Green Hornet edition. Where I review the first three issues of Mark Waid's Green Hornet. But we're here for this one, and. Once again, special thanks to my student, my bro, the Mount Vernon Kid, and to Midtown Comics for these books. We're going to start with DC Comics. We're going with issue number three of The Movement. Gail Simone, I take my hat off and I bow to you with my bad hair. <laughs> uh, but I bow to you, dear lady. You are not only a great writer, but... Throughout the conversations I've had with you on social media websites and everything, I can just tell you right now, you are just a sweetheart. Uh, this was good. Uh, the mission, take down catharsis. Mm. Now, the artwork, the interior artwork... Eh, uh, the, there are times I like it, there are times I don't really like it. Um... But oh, catharsis, poor, poor girl. I mean, she's, she's, she's got a spine on her. She gets her ass handed to her, and she still keeps going and everything. It's just very nicely done. Uh, while the other, while other members of the group are having to deal with the, uh, with dealing with Rainmaker, who is from uh, Gen Thirteen. Now, let me be frank here. I never really was into Gen 13 when it first came out. Uh, and I didn't get any Gen 13 books at all, period. I just, I couldn't get connected to it. So, seeing these characters from Gen 13 coming into the DC world, coming into the, the new 52 verse, it, it, it just does, doesn't have a, as big of an impact on me as I'm sure it does Gen 13 fans. But, um... Rainmaker is really badass in here and damn powerful. And, uh, I, wow, I don't know what else to think. Uh, Vengeance Moth, I, st I still believe that uh, she, the, the girl in the wheelchair, I still think that this is the new 52 replacement of Oracle. <laughs> this is basically, it's basically Gail Simone making up for the fact that there's no Oracle in the new 52 world. So I'm thinking that's what it is. But this was so well done. So nice. I mean, it's just, I love all these characters. I love where the story is going. I mean, the cops in this book are really made to look like the bad guys and it's and it's it's not the first time that a story has been done like this. You know, where the Villains or the crooks are the underdogs. They're represented. They're portrayed to look like the gu the good guys, and the cops are made to look like badass, you know, crooked assholes. You know, it's not the first time we've got this kind of storytelling, but Gail really knows how to do it. It's very nice. I, I can't get, I can't get enough of it. It is just so well done, and I'm not gonna get into I'm not gonna dive into it anymore because I don't want to spoil it this is one of those books where I don't really want to spoil hardly anything of it just solid solid stuff it's just pure Gail Simone goodness the artwork I can take it or leave it but overall the storytelling it was just fantastic all right moving on to dynamite we got the owl number one uh God, I love that cover. That Alex Ross cover. That's just bitching. Another one of the pulp heroes coming back for a new twist on here. Uh, I love the cover, and I loved the first page. It was kind of like a reminder of the yesteryears of classic comic books in there. And then we get to the main focus of the book, which I think lacks a little bit in, the, in, in, a, in an originality sense. It's another one of those stories where we got a classic pulp hero being, you know, having to ordeal with problems going back and forward in time. Gee, haven't seen that from Dynamite yet. But in here, I still think it's done very well. The owl 
you know, narrates the story, and he's like, you know, back in the glory, back in his glory days, which I think was like 60 years prior to now. He said, back in the glory days, criminals feared me. Criminals trembled at the very mention of my name. But here in the current day, they don't see me as a threat. They see me as more of a challenge or as just a mere obstacle for them to just jump over or something. It's just, wow. And it, it, it's like, you really, you really get that feeling. You know, some heroes just aren't feared anymore. Some sometimes superheroes are just looked at like that, and this was a really good reminder of that. Not just for the Owl, but for su for but for some superheroes in general. Very nice. And he's like he even compares the weapons to how they were back then and how they are now. And he's like the guns are louder. They sh the, the, they're more deadly. They're more dangerous. Those nowadays are just really different but then again so am I and it's just very nice uh, we get some exposition into his backstory on how he came into the current day how he was able to time jump 60 years into the future or into the present day of now very nice um, for what it was I'll take it it was good very very well explained very well explained and I understood it and at the end of the issue, we get a surprising introduction of a new character, and I'm not going to say, I'm not going to spoil what the name is because it'll probably give away the entire book. But it was a nice introduction, a uh, good look, solid action, and it ends on one of those cliffhangers where you know, you know, you're going to want something in the next issue, but you're probably going to get something else. It was one of those kinds of cliffhangers. I, that's the way I took it. This was a solid first issue. I really enjoyed it. I think it'd be worth your time. Give it a read. You might love it. This was good. Alright. Next up, part 9 of 12 of the Worlds Collide uh, uh, storyline and Sonic the Hedgehog issue number 250. Congratulations to Archie Comics to Sonic the Hedgehog's 250th issue celebrating 20 years of Sonic the Hedgehog comics. Now what's really, what's really interesting is that I used to collect Sonic the Hedgehog comics. I started at issue number one and I went all the way to 50. After issue 50 I stopped because at issue 50 Dr. Robotnik died. The original Dr. Robotnik was killed and I thought that was it and you know and I, and I stopped. And here we are 20 years here we are 20 years later we're still reading Sonic the Hedgehog comics but um, for this part of Worlds Collide this was without a doubt the absolute most action-packed part of the entire story there's like a humongous swarm of robot masters that Sonic Mega Man uh, and and his friends and sidekicks they have to deal with and the pairings, the fighting, the fight pairings in here were perfect. Sonic takes on Quick Man, you know. Knuckles takes on Stone Man and Cement Man or whatever. Um, Tails deals with robot masters that fly, and uh, <laughs> Espio, the Chaotix Ninja, takes on <laughs> oh, takes on um, oh shit, what was uh, what was his name? The, the Ninja Robot Master. Damn it, I'm, my mind just blanked. But everything here is just really, really nicely done. And you would think that it was such an action-packed part of the story, you would think that it was it would be time to drop the arrogance and get serious. But no, Sonic is still, despite being, in a, in a, being outnumbered in a fight with a bunch of robots, he's still incredibly arrogant, and I love that. And still, the uh, the character relationship between Doctor Doctor Wily and Doctor Robotnik it's still there, but you can definitely tell there's a dissension starting to build up between the two of them. And at the end of the issue, things ain't looking so good for Doctor Light. And I'm gonna leave it at that. This was a solid, action-packed thrill ride. I loved every page. Great stuff. Congratulations again, Sonic the Hedgehog, issue 250. We're going to end this with uh, Vertigo's The Wake, issue number two. Uh, Scott Snyder and uh, Mr. Murphy here. Uh, this is issue two of ten. 
is suggested for mature readers, and we get a really big reason why near the end of the book. But um, <laughs> boobies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's there's some full frontal female nudity. Yeah, yeah, boobies, boobies. <laughs> but what sells the book for me is that it's got that it's got that eerie eerie classic horror film story story uh style storytelling kind of build to it it's like uh they got the they got this sea creature in captivity we learn more about it and we get some revelation as to what its origins can be where it comes from what it actually is and everything it was really good we also get some more exposition for some more of the characters in here I have a feeling it's probably going to take another issue to get some more of that exposition introductory, you know, the introductions to all the characters uh, flushed out even more. But for what it was, this was really good. This was really good. Uh, there's definitely a lot of eerie and very creepy things going on in here. But Snyder and Murphy, they made it work. It was really solid. Uh, and the, 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 the ending. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, I, 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 I don't know what to say about the ending. Wow. Uh, just, you know, pick up this book. Give it a read. Let me know what you thought this was. This was definitely a, a bit of a whoa. You know what I'm saying? It's one of those kinds of books. Very good. All right. Uh, that's all I got for uh, this particular episode, everybody. I want to thank you all for joining me for this. Took me three episodes to get through that big stash of books that Chris sent me, <laughs> but you know what? I had fun doing it, and I love doing these stash these stash episodes. Um, post your comments, post your opinions. Let me know what you think about these books. Let me know what you thought about my opinions. You know, do whatever you want. Just don't troll me. <laughs> and uh, don't forget about my second channel, Blue Goblin X, where my main channel, where my main comic book reviews are at. Don't forget about that, okay? And uh, follow me on Twitter, on Tumblr. My friends at Dark Avenger Inc. Plus, of course, my friend Chris, the Mount Vernon Kid, everybody, all my friends, Deadpool, Zilla, Fast Stack of Comics, you name them, I'll plug them. <laughs> Thanks again for watching, everybody. I'll see you all later.